Welcome to Meet the Candidates. My name is Mark Lindy. I'm the General Manager here at Brockton Community Access, and it's our mission on BCA to educate people about all the candidates running for office. I have with me in studio former mayor, current counselor at large, former school committee member, Wynn Farwell. Welcome, Wynn. Nice, nice to be to see here. You. Thank you very much. Thanks for being on. You're um, welcome. My pleasure. It's important that people get to see and hear candidates, not just in a forum or a debate or whatever you have, but extend it for about 30 minutes so people can really make intelligent choices. Yes. People get a chance to see counselors that are on TV on Monday night, but you get to talk in snippets. It's like news, it's like sound bites on the TV news. You get That's to it. talk if you have something to say. You always have something to say because I know you do your homework. You work really hard at this job and it takes a lot of time. People don't realize that. Having been a public official, you have to look at all that stuff. You, and do you something do. With it. There, there is a lot to read, and I think that's something that's missing in the equation when people look at a council meeting. It's sometimes there are literally hours of preparation before mm -hmm. you go to council and you start asking questions, and it involves oftentimes calling a state agency, um, calling the inspector general's office for guidance on a bidding issue. Um, the Aquaria issue took a lot of time, uh, so it, it really has turned into almost a, a, a research, evaluate, and then make a decision uh, job. I know I've spoken to you on a council day and you've always said, I, I could talk to you forever, but I have to go back to my homework. That's it. That, okay? that is it. Because when you get there, you're on TV, it's live, and people are listening and, and uh, you know, the meetings have to move along. Sometimes they you do. need more time than you have, and I think it was a wise decision to move the meetings back to 7 o'clock so you all would have that extra hour in case you needed more clarification. Because I know like things with B21, Aquaria, they're pretty complicated issues. They're not just, and, and they've gone on for, for years and years. They, so. they have, and uh, you know, if you look at most professions, it's the prep time that really will spell whether you're going to know what you're talking about, um, express yourself appropriately and then make the right decision. Uh, whether you're a doctor or a lawyer or an accountant or a professor at Massasoit, uh, you can't just walk in and pick up a document and then be ready to to make an informed decision and I think the public expects us to be ready. Right and in Brockton unlike like Boston, they're full-time, they're paid full-time, you guys are part-time. That's it. But some of you put in full-time equivalent, okay? Yeah. I think you have a unique perspective. Ten years on the Brockton School Committee, four years as mayor, and now four years as a counselor at large. Yes. And you're looking to go for another another two. Yes. Um, tell us why we've seen other candidates, we've heard other candidates talk about experience matters. How about in your case? Why do you think it's so important having the wealth, I think, of three different bodies? Well, I, first of all, I don't think I'm any better than anyone else. I've just had more opportunities than other people. Mm -hmm. I think all of the candidates running, uh, as I do, have our strengths and our weaknesses. I've just been so privileged, blessed. I've just had the opportunity to get immersed in school issues, get immersed in mayoral duties, and now be a part of the legislative body. And that just by osmosis, but also by design, you learn a lot about municipal finance, about environmental issues, public safety issues, public works issues, uh, bidding, um, crafting ordinances for code enforcement that will hopefully enhance the quality of life for our city, economic development. So it's unfortunate that some people say, well, you know, there should be uh, term limits and someone's been there too long. I think you have to look beyond that and you have to look at the individual. And if that individual is working hard and trying to make the right decision and doing the research and educating himself or herself and consistently tries to make the right decision, that's how I think you should evaluate us. And I hope I do that. I mean, I, my basic question always is, is this good for Brockton? not for an individual, not for a particular group. I'm not interested in pandering to a group. Is it good for Brockton? Will it enhance the quality of life for the average Brocktonian? If, and if the answer is yes, then I think you go with it. 
If the answer is maybe, then I think you step back and do a little more research. If the answer is no, this really is only designed to help a particular person or a particular group, then I think you have to say no, that's not what we're all about. No favoritism, no, no uh, special perks for any particular person or group. Let's talk about economic development. There's been a lot of talk at the council level um, about TIFs. Yes. And tax increment financing and giving businesses a break to either come to Brockton or to stay in Brockton. We know W.B. Mason was going to move and they stay. Yes. But there are new businesses and there's plenty of places for economic development in Brockton. How do you see it? Well, the first thing I find ironic is that if someone wants to move to Brockton and buy a house, you know, a family of four, um, and they've qualified for a mortgage, but as you know, if you buy a house, there are always those unseen things that, that cost money. Um, homeowner's insurance goes up. Uh, your taxes go up slightly every year. You've got water and sewer fees. It seems interesting to me that we don't do anything for a homeowner for the first couple of years they move to the city. And I, I don't know if that's anything that would ever catch fire statewide, that, that maybe there ought to be some type of an incentive to help a first-time home buyer when they come into a community and, you know, give them a small break off of their taxes. But in terms of economic development, I have no problem having a tax increment exemption or tax increment financing if it's in a heavily blighted area and it will help that business get up and running, generate jobs, and be a part of the community and benefit the, the, the citizens with an expanded tax base. But I'm not interested in giving away the house. So uh, in a questionnaire that I uh, answered for the local newspaper, I said, you know, about a seven-year tax break in a heavily blighted area, 20 to 50 percent perhaps exemption. I think that's it because the more we give up those tax increases, the more we limit our ability to enhance city services, public safety, schools, right. reconstruct streets, which that's one of my major, major priorities which I have on my handout card. We're going to get to every major priority, I hope, within yeah. 30 minutes. The, I know the talk was the length of time of those tax increment yes. financing. 20 years to me seems like a lot. And you know what, that idea about homeowners, I think it would be great because I think if people come to Brockton, we're still one of the most affordable communities in the world for, in the state for people to come to. Okay, they're coming out of Boston. It doesn't take a lot to sell a house anymore in Brockton. You used to have hundreds of houses for sale. Now they can go in two hours or three hours. Well, I think it's important for the business community to know that we already have quite a few incentives for them with the, with the increment financing and, and exemptions. Uh, but, you know, if you don't have a customer base, you're not really going to have a strong business community. So, to me, getting people to move here, purchase a home, get assimilated into all that we do, the school system, uh, all that we have to offer, the art museum, et cetera, et cetera, and, and stabilize that population, I think in the long run, that's going to help economic development, equally if not more than a tax exemption which goes away after a period of time. But just my personal philosophy, I may be wrong, I am certainly not an economic development uh, professional, but I, but I do think a strong customer base leads to a strong economy for businesses. And you set the tax rate, the council sets the tax rate at a certain point in time. Business tax rate has always been viewed as higher. Resident, it's the same, you know, residents yes. and businesses. Um, does that have any effect on drawing businesses to Brockton or, or no? I think at some point it does, but I really don't believe our tax rate for businesses is excessive. And I think if we were to shift the burden onto homeowners, we would drive people out of the city. Uh, Especially it, fixed income. Fixed and income. Like you know, that. it's not it's not mentioned very often, but we do have people in the city that live paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. We do have seniors who live social security check to social security check, and they're in their home and they, they have their budget figured out really probably better than you and I have our budgets figured out. And if you were to hit them with even a $50 a month or a $100 a month increase in the aggregate for water and sewer and real estate taxes, you'd drive them out of their house. Mm -hmm. I, I don't believe they'd be able to survive. I have someone who works on my campaign who literally lives paycheck to paycheck. And, and I hear so often that, you know, it's not just that taxes go up. Uh, 
pharmaceuticals, pharmaceuticals go up. Absolutely. Um, car repairs go up. All of those things put together mean that you've got more expenses during a given year. And I don't want to push people out of their homes. Nope. I, I really don't. Different issues. Tell me the issues you have on your flyer there, and I'm sure it's what I was going to ask about anyway. Well, I, I did something different this year. This, this, uh, we don't talk about integrity in politics too often, and, uh, and I have no idea if the camera will pick up on this or not, but I think it's important that those of us who are in public life, we're not always going to make the right decision to please everyone. We always have our supporters, we have our detractors. But if you have integrity, then at least people know you've really tried to make the best possible decision. And I put in this card, integrity isn't everything in politics, it's the only thing. Without it, every vote and every decision is compromised. And I think that's true. If, if I don't have integrity, then people are always going to wonder, well, did he vote that way to favor someone? Is it because of a campaign supporter, a campaign donor? Is he trying to pander to a particular group? But if they see that you have integrity, they're going to say, you know what, I like that decision. Or, I don't like this, that decision, but I know he's the type that would strive to do the best possible thing that he could do for the city. So I thought that was important to put on there. And then I put my education, which uh, I thought was important, having a Bachelor of Science degree and a Master's in Education. And then in the back, um, it's called Our Brockton Agenda. Uh, but the interesting thing about this is this agenda is not mine. It was developed from going to ward meetings. And I always like to go to the ward meetings, whether it's Ward 2, Ward 4, Ward 5, Ward 7, Ward 6, because you pick up from the people who attend all of the issues that are important to them. And certainly honest, open government, no secret deals, I thought was very important. Comprehensive code enforcement, let's really clean up the city. Uh, and I think, and you travel through the city. Um, We've got to get rid of the junk cars. We've got to clean up business properties that are neglected. If we don't make the city attractive, you're not going to have economic development. People are not going to invest in a business here if getting to that business takes you through streets and areas where it looks like an abandoned junkyard or it looks like the grass hasn't been mowed in three years mm -hmm. or we've got broken fences and sidewalks that are cluttered with debris. So that was very important uh, to the people in, in the city. Repair and reconstruct our streets. You and I could talk all day in this. Um, it's been neglected because of financial constraints, but some of the streets have never been touched in 50 years, Mark. Mm -hmm. And people are just tired of it. They, they feel as though they pay their taxes and they should be entitled to have a street that doesn't have potholes and the kids can walk up and down and grandfathers and grandmothers aren't going to twist their ankle and, uh, and, and they want their street to at least be very appealing and I don't blame them. I got uh, in trouble once when I asked a question about that. I asked if that was a political process for the streets getting paved and I know there are about two streets a year per ward yes. that gets in. Who determines that? Is it, is, it, is it professionals that determine that? I mean we've seen some streets that got paved in the past, not yours, but we've seen streets where a counselor might have lived on that street. And I got chastised by a, 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 a mayor who was in office because I was talking about a certain street and one part of the street got paved and the other part of the street didn't. The same street. And boy, did I pay for that. Well, I think my street didn't get paved for 10 years basically because I asked that question. But. Well, you know, there is, unfortunately in politics, sometimes people get a bit punitive and that's too bad. But what really should be done is to go through the whole city, um, have our engineering department and DPW catalog all of the streets that need to be done and then triage them. You know, one absolutely has to be done almost impassable. Two, getting to the point where if we don't do it, it's going to be very expensive. And then three, okay, this can wait another three or four or five years until we can get it done. Um, having a master plan, uh, and that's not a, a euphemism for let's bury the problem. I mean, with right. me, it's you've got to have a plan to look at all of these streets and decide which ones really need to be done on a, on a yearly basis. Part of the problem is it's very expensive now per, per foot. You know, right. if, if a street is 
1,100 feet long, you're going to pay a lot and of money to have it. Pipes below the street and well, the other that, infrastructure that that's goes it. with it, too. That's it. Before you do a street, you really need to notify all the utility companies the gas, electric, uh, telephone, and say, look, if you have to do any work in the street, do it now, because once we repave it, we're not going to have you come in and dig it up and ruin it for mm -hmm. the next, I think the uh, ordinance says three years. But, um, but moving on, just a couple of other things. I put honor the taxpayer, probably corny, but you know what? We don't exist unless people pay their real estate taxes, right. their excise taxes, their sales taxes, their meals taxes if they go out to eat. Everything we do in government is dependent upon the goodness of the people paying their taxes into the city or the state, and I think they have a right to expect that we will spend that money wisely. We spend it as if it's our own. Don't waste it. Don't create unnecessary positions. Prioritize where it's supposed to go. Um, so, you know, people can make fun of honor the taxpayer, but you know what? I honor the taxpayer because I wouldn't be here without them. Isn't the fiscal part probably the most important part of the job, the financial oversight? I know, you're, I believe you're on accounts. I, I was. Now, Councilor McGarry took my place and okay. I switched to ordinance. But you, I used to approve warrants, the, the, the warrants to pay the bills at Southeastern. I'm the one that held it all up because I used to actually look at them and I, we did it all electronically. Yep. So I yep. would go in and look at them, but that's important. And then when you're, doing the, you're overseeing the budget, at budget time, you prepared a budget four times as the mayor and now you're on the receiving end, receiving the mayor's budget. And I know you asked a lot of questions. That's very important, is it not? It, it, it is, because we're always cash constrained. We, we, there is so much that we would like to do in the city, um, build another school, put in a STEM center up at the high school, uh, science, technology, engineering, and math, if, if someone is not familiar with that acronym. Uh, repave streets, add public safety services, police and fire, um, and, and not having those financial resources is tough. Uh, I always mention Foxborough, and not because of the Patriots. Yeah. I mention Foxborough because can you imagine what it's like to be in the town of Foxborough and have all that revenue from Patriot Place and the stadium? And then I understand they get a piece of the revenue from concerts. The public safety uh, complex there is outstanding it, it, because the Patriots paid for and built it. The, exactly. I mean, they literally those town officials have died and they're already in heaven. Right. Even Legacy Place in Dedham mm -hmm. or Marina Bay in Quincy. Yep. If, if we had a signature economic development place that yielded that kind of tax revenue every year, we could do so much more. But as it is, we kind of lurch forward every fiscal year cobbling together what we can and trying to make sure that we maintain the services that people need and so I do think financial management and, and scrutiny of our spending is critically important particularly where we just don't have a lot of money. Could we have that with the CSX property or uh, again it's other people own that land, yes. it's not the city that owns it or ultimately the Brockton Fairgrounds or the south side of Brockton where n nothing seems to stay in place in that plaza over there. We have, a, we have a city planner, we have a planning department, we, you guys just basically changed everything with B21 because there was waste and inefficiency and mismanagement from listening to all the questions that were asked and all the answers that either were or weren't given. Do you see economic development down the road in Brockton? Oh, absolutely. I, I do. I, I, think, I think you keep all options on the table, and you study each of those options, and you gear it to what is best for the city, not only in terms of the residents, but any financial implications for us. Uh, you mentioned the CSX property, and I know there's a lot of work that's being done on that. Um, a, I don't know if it's for sale. B, if it were for sale, I don't know what it would cost. Um, C, there is contamination there. I mean, that's been documented, so you're right. limited in what you can put there. Um, but again, keep all options open. You, you have to be open-minded and then see what information and data is brought into you and then make a decision from there. But yes, I do see, uh, I do see economic development in the city. I would caution, however, that it's, it's, uh, it doesn't happen overnight. And I think 
some of us, especially public officials, would love to see things happen bang, 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 and it isn't. You just have to, it's almost like building a puzzle. You put the pieces together and then finally you get the picture of what you want. Uh, and it is a bit frustrating. because We I, just uh, covered that meeting last week and they're open for public comment through election day, ironically. Okay. I, maybe the day after election day, but I've already heard two proposals for that site. Put the police, public safety, put police there, put move Mainspring over there. Um, Fire wants to be on Warren Ave, I think, next to where the old high school is. Yeah. There's so many proposals on the table. How do you sift them all together? And I mean, I think we're at a crossroads. We have a new election for a new mayor, okay? There's experienced counselors, there's challengers, there's people running for city council against the incumbents, there's challengers, school committee, there's a few races. How do we put it all together and keep moving Brockton forward. People are talking about moving Brockton forward. There's a lot of development in downtown right now. Yes. Okay, one of my contentions is until they do something to address Father Bills and Mainspring, it's gonna hinder it a little bit. Oh, I, okay? I think you're right. Because I, I, right around yes. this building, we have issues every day and nobody's insensitive to homeless people. Um, I think one, someone, one of the citizens out there talked about there's a difference between homelessness and lawlessness okay out there but how do we I always say you gotta have something for people to go to you can build all the buildings you want you need the restaurants you need the cafes you need uh, we don't have any bookstores still here anymore we don't have any movie theaters here anymore a tailor or a cobbler too yes, you have to have you, your shoes repaired or you want to have a suit I'm usually letting my suits out I'm not taking them in by the way so I go back and forth uh, it just well depends. You're, you're lucky yeah. uh, let me say this about elected officials. Let, let's put us aside for a minute. Let's, yeah. let's, and I don't mean this literally, forget the mayor and the city council. Any significant economic development piece that you have should be built from the ground up. And by that I mean getting the citizens involved. If it takes more than one meeting, so be it. But go out to wherever you think you're going to locate something. Meet with those residents. Tell them what you're thinking, what's on the plate. Be open and transparent. Get the feedback. Try to figure out, will this have broad-based support or is this going to hit a lot of problem areas? Um, and if you do that, I think uh, you'll have a better chance of, again, having broad-based support for economic development. Well, you're right. We go, we go way back talking about, I think you were on the school committee at, at that time, but when the Hilton was going to come in where Heights Crossing is. Yes. My, 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 my dad was on the planning board, got appointed by Crosby. When Pataro came in, they wanted that Hilton project. And dad did not get reappointed. He said, you did me a biggest favor. I don't like to go to planning board meetings yeah. anymore. But the neighbors and George Pappas, who was the counselor at the time, said we didn't want that. Thing. Oh, he so, was rabidly against okay. that. George, George really... He really spearheaded that whole that whole issue, and 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 by the way, citizens often think of things we never would, because if you don't live in that area, you you wouldn't think, well, you know, geez, we don't have a sidewalk in a certain area on our street, so if you build this, it's going to be a problem, or traffic is already uh, a problem. Uh, but you know, it, again, it's whatever you do in government, you'd like to have broad-based support for, That's because it's the people. Well, Thatcher Street was different, I, and I, you know, I know that was a contentious issue, but a group of nuns wanted to do something that they thought was in keeping with their order, and there was a public hearing, and I have to say, Mr. May, for all of the criticism that's been leveled, he, he dotted the I's and crossed the T's. He went, he held a public meeting. He went to the state, gave them all the information. They approved it as a potential overlay district. It went to city council, and I, I know 50 to 100 residents were against it. But you know what, Mark? I can remember 50 or 100 residents being against moving the high school. I can remember 50 or 100 residents that were against Westgate Mall. Mm -hmm. And you can't really hold back the city at the same time people are asking you for more services, reconstruct streets, more police and fire. And th there were just some outrageous claims that I'm not going to get into on Thatcher Street. And I know I've, I've left uh, people down there thinking that the council is harsh and, and we didn't listen. 
but my, my colleague, Councillor Cruz, probably said it best. He said, you know, bet, for better or worse, we sit here and we have to try to make a decision that's in the best interest of the entire city, not just a, a particular group. And sometimes that's painful. I mean, I've, I've, I'm sure I've lost votes and lost friends over that issue, but that's what they elect you to do, is try to make a decision in the best interest of the entire community. When we talk about the entire community, we talk about our community. Do you see division right now in Brockton? We've heard one Brockton, we've heard our community. What do you think about that? We were talking a little bit before yeah. we recorded the show about that. What, what are your thoughts? You know, I hope, I hope that some of the things you observe aren't really indicative of what's going on because elections should be decided on issues, on qualifications of the candidates who are running, on the philosophies that those candidates advance. Um, it doesn't matter to me what color someone is. It doesn't matter to me their cultural or ethnic background. The only thing that matters is are they equipped to master all of the technical and legal and financial issues that face the city. And that's what I hope people will do. I, I think there's a lot of passion out there right now, but I think at the voting booth people are going to boil down to candidate A or candidate B, mm -hmm. who they think will benefit the city the most. And let's hope the weather is good. I think we have a good forecast I hope for so, Tuesday. So I got the three minute queue. Okay. I want to give you two of those three minutes to talk directly to the voter, to tell, give them your contact information or whatever you want to say, and I'll take about 30 seconds on the other end just to close it out. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I, I would say to the voters of Brockton, thank you, thank you, thank you for giving me the opportunity to spend 10 years on the school committee, four years as mayor, and now almost four years as a counselor at large. You either love or hate public service. It's tough, especially tough with public service being so scrutinized by social media. But I like my job. I like working for all of you. I try to do all of the necessary research, evaluate all the issues, and then make the best possible decision. I'm not going to make every decision that pleases all of you, but I can tell you I will put the time and effort in to try to do what I can to move Brockton forward, to enhance the quality of life for our residents. I hope you will follow city government. I hope you will follow the candidates right up until Election Day, and I hope you will go into the voting booth on November 5th and support my bid for re-election and also select the other individuals you think will work hard on behalf of all of our residents. Uh, it's a great city. Do we have problems? We do have problems. Are there people willing to look at those problems and find solutions? There are. And I think in the long run, you will always be proud of this city, even as we elected officials come and go. Again, thank you from the bottom of my heart for the opportunity to serve you, and I hope I have the opportunity of returning in January to serve you again for another two years. Number one on the ballot, correct? Yes, just by virtue of being an incumbent and alphabetical. Alphabetical, yes. okay. So um, the most important thing is for everybody to exercise their right to vote. Don't take it for granted, Brockton. We had 25% in the preliminary. I've heard numbers of 30. I'd love to see 50 or 60. If you don't vote, don't complain. Get involved. Watch the candidates all the way up till the end read about them in the newspaper, check out their websites, but people fought and died for your right to vote. So make sure you do it, Brockton. Let's be a real city of champions. Thanks for joining us.